This is your house. These are walls, perimeter around your house. Right? This wall is to protect you and your family, right? It's to keep intruders from coming in. In this case, the demonic. If you don't know God, you won't have protection. If you don't have protection, your walls will be wide open. Your walls of discernment will be wide open. Then you become fair game for the deception of the enemy. If you don't know the Lord, you won't have counsel from the Lord. You won't have understanding from God. You won't receive counsel from God. You won't receive protection from God. Your spirit, then you'll be operating under a false spirit. Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. He, as anybody, man or woman, that hath no rule over his own spirit, who does not understand the spirit, the laws of the spirit, the laws of God, the spirit of God, the spirit of truth. If you don't have any understanding of that, how are you going to have discernment, the right discernment, not worldly discernment, godly discernment? It's like a city that is broken down and without walls. No walls. You get infiltrated easily. Right here, deception will take place. Your household operating under the wrong spirit. The spirit that has blinded you for years. There's a spirit in this world that is blinding the world through these seven spheres of influence. That's why inequity shall abound. If you notice here, I put few, find it. This is the sad truth. That there are going to be many people so influenced by these areas in life that they're never ever going to come to the knowledge of the truth of God. And the Bible clearly tells us that few there be that find it. So this is a funnel. The world, the average person is being funneled in to the way that this area that the enemy and the people who are influential at the top, they have influential power that affects the way every single person here thinks. So you pretty much get funneled into the way they're thinking or into the way they want you to think. 
you get funneled into that block of the way of the world. Remember, Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to the world. The world is going to try to mold you into the way they want you to be molded. The world is going to try to shape your opinions, shape your philosophies, shape your culture into the way they want you to think. That's through the power of deception, through these seven areas. So when you get molded into that, God's going to send people to show you truth before you get funneled all the way in and fooled. Not down here, though. The world wants to funnel you and shape you into the way they want you to be. And that's like this. But at the same time, God's always going to send people to show you truth, to guide you. God's always going to have a watchman on the tower to teach you what's going on over here. To tell you about what they're doing. The agenda of the New World Order. The agenda of the World Council on Churches. The agenda of the Pope. The Catholic Church. The agenda that's plaguing our hoods. The agenda that's targeting our kids. The movies. The music industry. The drugs. The alcohol. God's always going to send messengers people to give you the game on what's happening behind the scenes, the wizard behind the curtain. God's going to tell you about the abominations that these people are involved with, that you have to make up your mind what you want to do when you get filtered into that and when the world starts to mold and shape your ideology, your opinions, your perception about how this world is. Remember, Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to the world. They're trying to form you and shape you into an ungodly lifestyle, into the way they want you to be. The devil, through all these means right here, wants to form you and shape you into a global citizen. devil and these people who work at the top who are involved in the dark arts who want nothing to do with God yes godless who practice all this ungodliness they want you to submit to the way they want you to be so by time the new world order pops up You'll be already conditioned to the ways they want you to be, to the lifestyles they want you to live. They want you to conform to the new world order or to the new global reset or the European Union or the global community. So that you can become a global citizen and easier to manage. That's happening right now. I just got done doing some heavy research on the metaverse. The blockchain, cryptocurrency, virtual reality. That is pure wickedness. It's coming. I'm going to make a video on it, but not right now. I just want to let you know that we are headed for some more wicked times. Heavily wicked. And I want to encourage you, be careful. All right? Like Jesus said, let no man deceive you. Be cautious. Ask God for soundness. Ask God for discernment so you can see what's really going on behind the scenes. Right now you're being sifted. The enemy is separating. God 
is separating the wheat from the tares, the wolf from the sheep, the goat from the sheep. You want to be the goat, the greatest of all time? You don't want to be that goat. Not on this level, not with God. You don't want to be a goat. A goat resembles rebellion. That's why you got the goat of Mindy. That's why you got the inverted pentagram. And you got the Balfamit inside, which is Satan, known as the goat. You don't want to be nowhere near labeled or even thought of as a goat. Remember, the goat resembles rebellion. And remember, what's rebellion? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Witchcraft is an abomination to God. Deuteronomy 18, 10, 11, and 12. Study that verse, those verses. Study them. This is all in the Bible. I'm not making none of this up. You seen me burn those converse? Because I ain't playing. I ain't playing with this. This ain't no joke to me. I used to walk with the enemy. I did a lot of foul things, wicked things, and a lot of violent things in the name of the enemy. So who am I to tell you what's really going on behind the scenes? I have been, I have done and performed a lot of this stuff. I have lived in rebellion most of my life. But no, somebody taught me the word of God. Uh-uh, I ain't messing with that no more. All this, I'm done. I'm out of it. 2013, you guys know. That's when everything changed. Jesus came. I got sifted, got drugged through the mud, went through the furnace, went through the gauntlet. Got my butt whooped, tossed up by the enemy. Not no more. Why? Because now I have the Holy Spirit. God guides me through everything that I need. Through the grace of God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm still here, man. I'm still here. God has filtered me. I've been beat down, man. I know what it's like. I've been through drugs. I grew up on drugs and alcohol and violence, man. I know what all that is like. I've been depressed. I've seen depression. I've seen oppression. I still see it today. I was just talking to two different people, ministering to them. One was an alcoholic. One was rolling a joint. Rolled up on both of them. And gave them the gospel of Jesus Christ, man. So that they can be set free from this junk. So they don't have to be tied to the bondage anymore. See what I'm saying? Once you speak the word of God to somebody and they choose to be set free, they can be set free. Then as you go through the funnel and you start to discern and decipher the difference between ungodliness and godliness and the difference between the world wisdom and God's wisdom, you go through the filter and God starts showing you truth. Remember, in spirit and truth, he'll guide you. Then you become one of God's, one of the remnant, the few that find it, those who yield to Christ. That's where you want to be. You don't want to get caught up in all this and get conformed to this, man, because this is where chaos lives. This is why you have children shooting up schools. I like killing because um, when I first watched my grown-up, Killing show, um, my self started to like killing, and then my brain started to like tell me what to do with killing it. So okay. I like murders, and I like killing.
killing in my life. I want to kill everybody in the world except for my family because they just didn't do anything to me. I just like killing. I just like killing. So what are you going to be again when you grow up? A murderer. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wanna be, what do you want to be when you grow up? A murderer because I like killing. This is why you have children shooting up schools. This is why you have pornography. This is why you have wicked movies coming out every month. The Bible says, I will put no wicked thing before my eyes. Because once you put the wickedness before your eyes, the curse settles in on your life. That curse is what destroys you. Remember, his goal, Satan's goal, kill, steal, destroy. How many people were just destroyed in a mass shooting within just this month? It's insane, man, because you're witnessing evil taking over and consuming the world. First John 5, 19, because the wickedness is consuming the world. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Let's read it. First John 5, 19. And we know that we are of God and the whole world. Lieth in wickedness. Let's read it again. And we know that. Who's we? Those are followers of Christ. Those are the righteous. Those are those who walk upright. In Jesus name. These are those who have yielded. Their lives. To the Lord. And we know that we are of God. So we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness why why because of these seven mountains of influence through the deception of the enemy fooling the minds of those that believe not Now, where does it start? It all starts with the family and it trickles into the fabric of society. Family, you got to teach your children. Jeffrey Dahmer, Charles Manson, Hitler, raised to do evil, weren't trained right. Were they bred for this? Obviously. How many other thousands of children are being bred right now for evil? Who are getting ready to commit some form of wickedness? How many people are sitting at home right now watching child porn? Getting ready to rape a small child? Is that a reality? That's a reality today. How many people are being groomed to be an abortion doctor? How many people are getting ready to do an abortion? I'm not judging. I'm telling you the reason why we're doing abominable things. It's because we're right here right now. We're lying in wickedness. This whole world is consumed by evil. And let me read one more verse in Revelation that's a sad prophecy about Babylon. Babylon is the entire infrastructure. Babylon is the influence of pagan practices that began back in the Babylonian era with King Nimrod. And then some. This is a prophecy in Revelations 18. One. That's coming. And after these things. I saw another angel come down from heaven. Having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily. With a strong voice. Saying. Babylon. The great is fallen. Is fallen. And is become the habitation of devils right there 
in the hold of every foul spirit, in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is what I'm talking about. Babylon, you hear that? Just think the influence of the entire world that is contrary to God, that is doing abominations that God doesn't like. The world is, will become a habitation of devils. You know what that means? Since every, since every devil's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. And that inequity shall abound. That means perilous times are coming even more, just like the Bible tells us. That means more wickedness, more evil, more rampage, more rebellion, more wicked laws to be established. They go against the Lord. More abominations will take place because every demon, there's no such thing as a good demon. Every single demon has the same agenda. That's to kill, steal, and destroy. And if your heart ain't right with Christ, if your walls are wide open, look at this. Tore up. If your walls are wide open, you will fall by these habitation of devils that are soon to come. They're already here. There's no doubt. You can walk on the street right now and see it in people's eyes. You can see the torment. You can see the mental anguish. You can see the pain in people's faces in their eyes. If you ain't right with Christ, and if you're operating under the wrong spirit, and you don't find out what all this means, and what the word of God is, and how you can be freed by the truth setting you free. If you don't find out, you're going to be in this bracket right here. You're going to be one of the few that be that find it. Ultimately, everything, everything comes down to decisions. The decisions you make today will have a profound effect on where you spend eternity. I made some horrible decisions that made my life plummet into chaos. You have free will. Some of you are making decisions today that are gonna put you in a pen in a matter of time. Some of you are making decisions today to where you're gonna end up homeless. Some of you are making decisions today to where you're going to lose your husband. Some of you are going to lose your wife, your family. Some of you are going to fall deeper into depression because of decisions you make today. I know cats who have made decisions to where they ended up in prison. I know cats who have made decisions to where they ended up being homeless. I know cats who made decisions that got them killed. Yes, killed. This decision God is asking you to make is not hard at all. It's just that when you've been conditioned for so long, and that's all you know, that's how you live. You don't want nothing to do with God, you'll live a godless life. And with a godless life comes chaos. Make the right decisions today. Let that decision lead you into surrendering to the Lord because that's all he wants. All the Lord wants is for you to just recognize that when you make the wrong decisions, those decisions could land you into eternal damnation. And the thing about decisions is that you don't have to repent. You don't even have to come to God. And I'm not even telling you not to come to God, but I'm telling you that 
You have free will. God is not going to force you to come to him. He will never force you to come to him. If you use your free will to do your own way, to rebel against God, there are consequences. Listen to this. Ignorance of the law does not excuse you from the penalty of the law. Ignorance of the law does not excuse you from the penalty of the law. If you don't want to know if there's a heaven or a hell, that's on you. You can find out though, but when you stand before God, you'll have no excuse. You will be without excuse. You aren't going to stand there before God and say, I never knew God. I never knew. You know why? Because he already told you, sent you warning after warning after warning. Thousands of times, there are many, 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 many times that you heard that there's a chance for you to change your life through Christ. You've already heard about Jesus dying on the cross for your sins. You already know about that. For you to reject that, that's on you. Read this verse. Your soul is required of you. You don't take it serious, that's your fault. You can't blame nobody. Because only you and you alone are going to stand before God one day. And that's coming soon. And when you stand before God, there's no excuses. In Jesus' name, repent today. But there is a solution. If you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you make that decision today, God will show you. God will guide you. God will counsel you through any situation you're going through right now. It doesn't matter what it is. Any situation you're going through right now, God will get you through it. In Jesus' mighty, holy, precious name. Stay in the war. Stay in the battlefield. Don't stop. Don't surrender. Never accept defeat. That's unacceptable. In Jesus' name.